Hey guys, what up, it's your boy Aaron coming at you with a fresh new reaction video. In this video, today, you guys, we're going to be reacting to the Making a Sailor series. So, we're going to be reacting to episode one. If you guys are new to the channel, feel free to check out my channel, browse around, subscribe. I've got plenty of videos out there to help you guys out with all of your military video needs. And uh, whatever questions you got, I try my best to do some in depth information to help you guys out with whatever you guys are looking for. Um, so, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you're new, please consider subscribing. It helps me out creating fresh new videos like this. So, Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Hope you guys enjoy the reaction. All right, guys, here it is, episode one. Get on the bus. Let's start this reaction. Come on, let's go. All the way in the back. All the way in the back. Let's go. Hurry up. Boom. Let's go. Get on the bus. Go. You're gonna see a lot of people like with that exact face. They're like nervous. They're scared. They don't know what to expect. That's gonna be just about everybody. You guys have nothing to worry about. So don't don't stress. It's it's all a front to like make you nervous, to make you scared, because they want to get you scared so they can see how you react under pressure. Then from there they're gonna teach you basically how to react under pressure. You're not gonna really have a choice. Alright, literally, just like what you guys just saw that, like, split little second of everybody on the bus, they don't really allow you to talk, but I'm sure even if they did, that bus would remain silent. That bus would be so quiet either way, and it is. You could literally be up here where the driver's at, and you could be looking all the way back at that kid that's all the way in the back, like where the cool kids used to sit back in high school or middle school or whatever. You could be all the way back there. You could hear a fly fart from where the driver's sitting. It is so quiet on that bus, you guys. And then to make things worse, these little monitors are in there and they're going to play this little thing of like a captain or somebody and he's going to be like, hello, you're about to embark on the toughest journey of your entire life. And be assured, it's not easy. It wasn't meant to be. Like, this is difficult, essentially. But then he's going to teach you, like, he's going to, like, give you, like, one last refresher on your general orders and, like, command staff, like, all sorts of stuff. Like, chain of command, rather. But all sorts of stuff, so it's gonna be like a quick little refresher. Bus rides like 40, 50 minutes or so, and uh, that video is gonna play like three or four times. But all right, here we go. We're going into the belly of the beast. That is great mistakes. Okay, so it's yeah, that's right. It follows the the videos like follow somebody or some people. Oh, wait, you gonna fast? I'm gonna fast. I'll go. I'll go. Okay. I guess this is going to be to give you like an idea of how like diverse it is because in my division I had people from like Asian countries, a couple, a couple people from Africa, like people come literally from all over the world, not just all over the country, but all over the world. And you're going to see that the military is a very, very diverse place. <laughs> you introduce yourself, I'll introduce myself. Uh, all right. Hi, Farm my name boys. is Gabriel Cashit. I'm 18. I'm Simon Cashit, and I'm also 18. We're from Australia, but we were born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And we ship out Navy food. boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> we get asked everywhere we go. Like yes, twins. we are twins. Uh, we're not identical though. Paternal. Or is it paternal? Paternal. Ah, doesn't matter. I guess you've always got that best friend next to you. Yeah. I guess we've never. All right, these guys are goofy. So right off the bat, I love these guys. These guys are funny. I really had that. So it's gonna be different once we get assigned to a boat, or if we're not in the same company in boot camp. So. My name, my country, my country's name. Um, I haven't been practicing as much as I should, that's for sure. I'm not going to lie about that. All um, over the world. Around the world. Around You're the really world. butchering it here. It, it was a long waiting period, but then <laughs> this past month has just gone by um, so quickly that yeah, it's unbelievable. They turn him back now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Rachel. Got yeah, the doctor hand right. Rachel Jones. Rachel Jones. Then what else did you say? You can put like a personal message, like a quick word of wisdom. Why I joined the Navy? To get a master's degree? Okay. The military will definitely help you out with your degree, tuitions, assistance, things like that. Buy a house. Navy will also help out with that. Okay. Mission. That's good. To make money, 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 money. <laughs> Psych. Uh, not at first, but it's definitely a it's definitely a great avenue. Uh, in or even when you choose to get out, if that's something you do choose to do, 
the Navy, not just the Navy, but all branches of service will set you up, like, for sure. Like, that's one of the things you need to do. Even if your plan is to get out, you need to just, like, network. You just need to see who you can get in contact with. Like, your job, like, I'm an aviation ordinanceman, but there's tons of jobs I can go and do at an airport if I decide to get out. But I'm not going to decide. But let's get back to this. I wonder what I put. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm 24 years old. I live in Alexandria, Virginia, and I'm getting ready to ship off to Navy boot camp. So I studied French at George Mason. Um, I was there for four and a half years. I took a year to study abroad in France. When we were in college, I wouldn't wow. have expected you to go to like the military. I really appreciate the group of friends that I have made. Um, I made them at Mason as well. I'm not gonna cry. I'm Initially going in there and Okay, this is a great opportunity to teach you guys something cool. So what she's doing, she just got into the recruiting office. So it's the same as going onto a ship. Like my ship currently is underway, but here on base I had a, a bud take me on one of the uh carriers, the John C. Stennis. And I was in civilian attire, so I had to stand at attention for the ensign or the American flag. For those of you that don't know like the proper terms for things. But um, so what you're gonna do if you're not in the delayed entry program, you're gonna go in. This is once you're in, of course. Um, you're gonna salute the ensign, go back to attention, and you're gonna face whoever is basically acting as like the officer of the deck, whatever. Um, and you're gonna salute them. Future sailor Pereira, respectfully requesting permission to come aboard. That's not like a proper salute, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, and so it's like. The training kind of starts there, like they're already getting you like familiar with like how to do certain things, like getting you in that mindset. And boot camp is going to continue to do that entire thing, like everything is ship based in boot camp. So this is like it, it honestly kind of starts here with your recruiters, your mentors. Talking to the Navy, I was a little bit apprehensive. Once I walked into the recruiting station, that this is something that I I really did want to do. Mr. Sailor, what is your first general order? Who knows it? Who knows your first general order? Take charge of this post and all government property in view. Bam. Petty officer, my first general order is to take charge of this post and all government property in view. Petty officer. Bam. <laughs> no, you killed it. I expect it to be challenging. I don't expect it to be difficult um, because thinking about how many people a year go through boot camp, it cannot be that hard. True and uh, I want to I want to tack on that. True and not true. Like. Okay, look at how many people go through Marine Corps boot camp, for instance. A lot of people go through Marine Corps boot camp. You talk to 9 out of 10 people, they're going to tell you it was, it was super difficult or like it was just a horrible experience. So just because a lot of people do it doesn't mean it's easy, per se. So with that being said, it might be a breeze for one person. It might be like the worst nightmare for another person. It's, like, it's going to be what you make it, honestly. But like there's parts of boot camp that are going to hit people differently for instance one person being with family he's going to get hit by hit hard by that one person's not going to be able to adjust to the lifestyle one person's going to have a problem with authority being told what to do things like that someone's going to get put into a leadership position they might not be a great leader they might be struggling with learning how to become a leader all sorts of stuff the training is designed to actually train you from, break you down from who you are as an individual and lift you up as a team that's right you know so you'll get that and it'll give you direction for the rest of your career. Yeah, I remember seeing my dad come pick me up from elementary school in his uniform, and I'm just like, yep, that's my dad. Yep, he fights bad guys. So now that I'm getting to put on that uniform, and now my youngest brother will be able to see me and think that I'm super cool. <laughs> get this honor of being able to defend our country. So I feel very proud about that. It's an adventure. <laughs> oh, all right, right on. Intel specials. Yeah. Wow, completely different. Hi, I'm Luis, I'm 19 years old. I was born in El Salvador, uh, live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I'm about to leave for boot camp. 
Uh, my favorite part of Baton Rouge will be downtown. You know, me as a, being as a curator person, I, I love taking pictures of the places of this of the of the city. But from whenever I moved to Baton Rouge, I remember I, I hear laughs and I hear people talking about me and you know saying that. I, I, I immediately think he's gonna want to go for mass communication specialist. I don't know why, but I just have a feeling. So I don't know. We'll see. He, he's the guy who doesn't know any English and it's stuff like that. And then here I am now. I'm about to join the Navy and I'm really excited about it. See, just like I was telling you guys, who the Benson? Now he's gonna request permission to come aboard. So, right. It was so quick. I, I, like it feels like it was yesterday that I called you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's two weeks like for me too. before I got my citizenship. Honestly, I called my recruiter off. My recruiter. And then, like, I think two weeks after I got my citizenship, I got sworn in in the office. So it, it all, it was a perfect timing. Are you gonna be sad, happy? Happy. You're gonna be happy when I'm gone. Why? Because she's gonna be proud of you. Uh, she's gonna be proud. I did a lot of research. Well, not a lot, but I've done some research on um, what boot camp is like. Uh, I'm not really scared about it. I um, have a mind. You shouldn't be. You sh there's nothing to be scared of. Just go there and just tackle it head on. I said, I think that if I go in there thinking that I'm the best, it's gonna higher my standards of what I can actually do. I, I'm nervous. He, he didn't hit me back then. Right there, I'm gonna tack on that. You need to push yourself to be better than your limits. Because if you never push your limits, you'll never exceed where you're at and your abilities to do things. You wanna always strive to push the boundaries to be better than what you are and what you can be. That's the only way of getting better. And but now it's just starting as the time getting closer, you know, it's, it's getting a bit They're proud. My parents are really proud about me joining the military. Um, of course, they are a little bit sad that I'm leaving, but they know it's for the best of me, so. I'm gonna talk on what he said really quick. Like, they're proud of you, but like, towards the end of this series, like, I'm pretty sure like you'll get to see these these people again reuniting with their families at graduation and just take mental note of like the way that their families and friends are looking at them because that look will change like I I don't know how to explain it like I saw I saw it at my mom like I saw it in my mom at my brother's wedding I'll put the photos up there um like my mom she looks at me like a completely different way and the same thing with my dad I'll see if I can throw up a photo or two as well um, but yeah, everybody looks at me differently. Like I don't really feel a whole lot different, but I don't, I don't know. It's weird. Like I was riding, I, I got back home and I was riding in the car with a friend and he just, he was just looking at me and I was like, what's up, bro? And he's like, you changed. I was like, what do you mean I changed? He's like, I, I don't know, but you changed. You're not the same person as, as you were when you left. I was like, is it a good change? Or he's like, I'm not sure yet, but I don't know. I just know you're like not the same person. So. Just tagging them on what he said, like, and to, to add more depth and perspective. Well, that that makes up for it. And uh, I'm going to miss you guys. Oh, I miss you. A lot. I miss you guys. A lot. But, you know, same like the mom, I feel so happy. And you happy? I'm happy. happy. Whenever we back left El Salvador, my, my mom left all her family behind. Um, she came here to absolutely nothing. She, she, it was, she did it all for me, and, and uh, I really consider my, my parents heroes for me. You know, doing that, the huge sacrifice of leaving the whole family behind just to give me and my brothers a better life is something I gotta take advantage of. You know, if, I, if I'm living in this beautiful country, I'm gonna take advantage of that. And I'm trying to do that the best way I can by joining the military. Oh boy. So we're gonna work all night, then we get breakfast, and then it's a whole day. All right, so they're at the airport. You're not gonna get really like a whole lot of time, but you wanna try and sleep as much as you can on the way to boot camp, because like, you ain't gonna sleep for like three days. Like it's no joke. They keep you awake for like three days. Like you'll, you'll only go to your compartment to drop off your stuff. That's it. <laughs> it's just medical and processing. Hurry up, let's go. Get on the bus. 
Let's go. Hurry up. Move. Let's go. Get on the butt. Go. Yo. I'm getting the chills. I'm getting the chills. I'm getting the goosebumps. Oh, here we go. It's getting real. Your bags, all your straps, keep your legs inside. This aisle will stay clear so I can walk up and down the aisle. There will be no sleeping. There will be no talking. We'll ride this bus in complete silence. Is that understood? Yes, Petty Officer. Is that understood? Yes, Petty Officer. We'd like to commend you on your decision. Hey, there it is. That's what I was talking about. The little monitors. Yo, it is so nerve-wracking watching this. ...to serve this great nation and welcome you to the beginning of your journey in the United States Navy. He's a captain. Now, you are about to undertake a rigorous and intense training program that has prepared generations of sailors for service in the world's most powerful Navy. Whether you call it recruit training or boot camp, make no mistake about it. It's hard. It's designed to be hard. Because joining the Navy is so much more than just getting another job. There it is. When you get off the bus, you will walk with a purpose. Like you mean to accomplish something tonight. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Yo, I know exactly where they're at. Oh my gosh, that flagpole. We marched by it so much. That little there's a little walkway by this by this flagpole that connects to the other base where you're gonna go down that infinite uh, infamous tunnel where you sing anchors away. Uh, what you're looking at right here, this is all of Pearl Harbor. And then down a little bit further, we're out over here now. This is This is Golden Thirteen. The infamous Golden Thirteen. Here's where it all begins, guys. Oh, it's over. Man. Okay, well that's it for the first one. Well, I'll try to jump on the second one as soon as I can, but yo, these next few videos, I'm not gonna lie. These videos are about to be lit, you guys, so uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys are excited. Let me know who's shipping out sometime soon with this crazy virus going on. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, check out some of the other content I have out there available for you guys. Uh, it'll help you out with pretty much a lot of your questions. But that's pretty much it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.